the green hydrogen market is about to explode. Companies and countries are realizing the importance of investing in carbon-free technologies and hydrogen fuel cell technology is at the forefront of that push when it comes to decarbonizing shipping, trucking, or aviation. Alongside battery electric technology, hydrogen fuel cells will allow us to decarbonize and decentralize our energy production and remove our dependence on fossil fuels that are dominated by just a handful of players across the world. Green hydrogen is the link between the fossil fuel and electrification industries, allowing us to store energy for longer than we've ever done before and decarbonize the sectors we never thought we could before. And as investments are pouring in from some of the biggest automakers and industrialists across the world, questions are arising from investors in the stock market as to how can you actually take advantage of this opportunity. Don't get me wrong, the stock market should be the least of concern when considering the damaging effects of climate change. But as investments tend to drive change, it's important to spread awareness about exactly what investment opportunities lie and what tools and instruments you can use to take advantage. Not only will this raise awareness about the important role hydrogen will play in the decarbonization race, but it can also help allocate capital to the right projects and allow other startups to make a valuable change. And that opportunity is exactly what I want to discuss in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's first understand why hydrogen even matters. As somebody who's focusing on climate change, reducing emissions and electrification, why would you want to invest in green hydrogen, which is a fuel that's very expensive, hard to find, and obviously difficult to handle in certain scenarios? And the answer to that question is twofold, decentralization and decarbonization. You see, not only is green hydrogen a way for companies and countries to decentralize their energy production, meaning they're all of a sudden making their own energy without depending on a utility, but it is also a way to introduce decentralization into the critical industrial applications of hydrogen gas. Even without green hydrogen, regular hydrogen is used in feedstock for various chemicals and as heat for producing steel, cement, paper, food, and aluminum. These are obviously critical elements for society, which means we already have a super established supply chain demanding hydrogen gas. And guess what? Most of this hydrogen is currently produced by centralized conglomerates, whether that be BP, Shell, or Chevron. This means if suddenly there's a geopolitical tension or a contract or agreement falls through, you're at risk of losing your critical hydrogen supply to keep your country or your company going. This is exactly what we've seen happen with the Ukraine war, where all of a sudden the biggest oil producer for Europe, Russia, has cut off critical supply to European nations. Gas prices in Germany and France are now three times as much as they were before the pandemic, and this is causing countries to reduce their demand for energy all while electrification is taking off. At this rate, it's obviously going to be impossible for these countries to decarbonize and bring electrification onto their roads, squeezing the government and, worst of all, the middle class. And this all ties into the exact reasons a technology like green hydrogen matters. Countries can now be independent with their energy production for certain fuels that they simply can't replace with batteries, whether that be methanol, ammonia, or hydrogen-based methane. It's all a driver of society, and it's important for these countries to secure their future. But obviously, I'm sure you guys are now asking the question, how can you actually take advantage of this opportunity? Yes, hydrogen has immense applications, investments are rising, and costs are expected to fall significantly by 2030. But where do you start? What companies do you invest in? Do you go to private equity, the public equity markets, or what do you do? Well, here's exactly how I'm playing in this sector. First of all, it's important to keep in mind that hydrogen businesses that are publicly traded are going to be immensely unprofitable in the short term. When people think of stock market investing, they think of value investors like Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch, who buy stocks that are undervalued and that produce a lot of earnings and cash flow. 
But hydrogen stocks are going to be the exact opposite, and you need to be aware of that. When investments are skyrocketing at a pace like we're seeing for green hydrogen, businesses in this space are going to focus much more on growth rather than short-term profitability. Growth is what happens when there's more competition. That is exactly what's happened in the EV space for the past five years. But over the long term, the businesses that survive, that pivot to the right sectors and create a good value proposition are the ones that end up creating the most shareholder value. And as of right now, it's impossible to predict what those businesses will actually be. And that's because right now, hydrogen is just in a very early stage. Precedence Research is expecting a 60% compound annual growth rate in this sector by 2030. As of 2021, the market is only worth around $1.91 billion globally for hydrogen-based fuel cells. But by 2030, it's expected to grow to $131 billion. This is faster than electric vehicles, solar, or wind technology, which is exactly what's going to create so much opportunity and also volatility. And let's be honest, we haven't seen a sector as hyped up as hydrogen since probably the advent of solar technology in the 2010s. This is how the market viewed solar technologies in 2011. A company by the name of First Solar, which went public in 2010, tanked by almost 85% after its IPO. Then for about five years, there was very little talk around solar energy, even as costs were collapsing for solar cells. And then once the company gained a lot of revenue growth, saw its gross margins turn positive, and all of a sudden started turning a profit, the shareholder value started to skyrocket. And guess what? During that same time frame, we were seeing solar capacity installations skyrocket in all different sectors of the U.S. economy. And the really interesting thing here is, as you can see, community solar, for example, in green, only started to become a significant portion starting in 2016, whereas everything really started off in the utility sectors for solar, as well as residential. And that is exactly how it's going to play out for hydrogen. For example, hydrogen fuel cell cars might not take off over the next five years, but heavy duty trucking, aviation and shipping might, as well as utility scale energy storage. So those parts of the entire value chain will see their growth first and that will then trickle into other segments like hydrogen at home or hydrogen fuel cell cars later on. And as for how have hydrogen stocks performed over the past 10 years? Well, as you can see at the peak of the market in early 2021, plug power, fuel cell energy and bloom energy were up anywhere from 400 to 1000% at their peaks. Yes, a lot of this was driven by Biden getting elected and the race for the infrastructure bill that came out just last year. But a lot of this was also driven by hype and the focus from Wall Street on the growth upcoming for these companies. It became pretty clear pretty fast that these companies generate real revenue from real paying customers who see a value proposition from the technologies that these hydrogen companies provide. Right now, it's mostly about growth and skill and market domination. At certain point, it's going to turn towards shareholder equity and profit generation. And that's when we'll really start to see the real returns for most shareholders, not only in private equity, but also the public markets. And that's why I see the hydrogen trajectory for stocks over the next couple of years playing a similar trajectory to what we saw happen with solar over the past decade. This is the Invesco Solar ETF, which was launched in 2010, right at the peak of solar cell prices, which obviously fell drastically. But as you can clearly see, the ETF performance did not directly correlate with how solar cells were coming down. Instead, it correlated with investor sentiment in the short term, as well as cash flow and profitability for these companies. We saw immense hype at the very beginning, then a sell off, then consolidation and some new hype cycles, which again kind of waned off for another few years where we saw very little talk about solar and renewable energy investments. That was until 2020, when all of a sudden people realized these companies were approaching real profitability and incentives and federal policies really started to shape in. 
And throughout this movement, you had some solar companies like Solar Edge beat the index and completely outperform its nearest competitors. And some companies like Sunrun not perform nearly as well, but still generating healthy profits for shareholders. And this, I think, is the right way to think about a technology like hydrogen. There was a new ETF launched by the name of Global X Hydrogen just last year, ticker symbol HYDR. And as you can see, in the past bear market, it is down around 40 to 50% from its peak. Yes, this is a very small ETF with AUM of only $50 million, but it does a good job of diversifying investments in the hydrogen space, from companies that manufacture electrolyzers like Nell to companies that provide fuel cell power modules like Bloom Energy, as well as companies that provide fuel cell trucks, electrification solutions, and logistics equipment like plug power or ballard power systems. And as you can see, this hydrogen ETF has performed very similarly to the solar tan ETF I just showed you. After the IPO in early 2022, this stock has performed very poorly compared to the rest of the market. The Nasdaq's down 30%, yet this index is down almost 50%. But this is exactly the opportunity that markets are creating. Look, I'm not going to give any financial advice. You guys already know the types of companies that I personally invest in on a stock picking basis. But if you want to truly understand the risks and the opportunities associated with investing in an area like hydrogen, you have to be familiar with how previous growth technologies have played out. And as you can see, overall, in terms of price action, it tends to be a very boring investment. But it does not mean you cannot make money and create wealth long term. You just need to know when to buy at the right time and sell at the right time based on your own circumstances. Whether it be diversifying with an ETF like the Hydrogen X or picking individual companies in the hydrogen space, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to make money and lose money. Stocks right now have corrected in this space, and it's going to be up to you to decide if you see this as an opportunity or as a time to sit on the sidelines. Yeah, it's true, hydrogen costs are still high, so profitability for some of these companies is nowhere gonna be in sight in the next five years. But by 2030, some hydrogen resources are gonna be cheaper to make in the form of green than gray. That's gonna allow lots of economies of scale and could mark that eventual inflection point just like we saw with solar in 2020. But as usual, the key is always going to be to make sure you do your own research, understand the businesses or ETFs you're investing in, and make sure you understand the bigger picture perspective. But as usual, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.